there's a lot of um, arithmetic operations being performed by the ALU, right? Um, uh, and so I just have an example of a very basic addition operation using a high-level programming language, right? it's Python in this case, version three. And what, what I'm doing here in this example is I'm saying I've de defined two variables that are going to hold values five and seven. And then I implicitly declare or define a variable C that's going to hold the result of adding A and B. And you notice that when I print C, I get a 12. The reason I have included this is trying to set the stage for what we are um, we're going to look at when we're trying to come up with a representation of this in assembler, right, using MIPS in this case. Right, so you notice that for us to mimic what we have here, if you're adding two numbers, if you want to add two numbers and put the result in and store the result somewhere, you notice that the first thing you need to do is you need to load the numbers that you're interested in adding. In this case, it's five and seven. You have to load five. So because MIPS is register based, before you perform the operation, the things that you want to manipulate or work with must be loaded into registers. In this case, if you want to add two numbers, five and seven, both of these numbers must be added into registers before you work on them, right? So you load five into a register. You get to choose which register. Um, safe register range is always the best, uh, uh, the, the best, the safe registers, the, the registers in this safe range are the best to use. So T naught up to, is it T50, T8 or something, I think, is it? Or register eight to 15, right? And there's also, is it 24 to, and 25 or something? I don't know. Don't have to memorize these things. Um, see here, I'm not memorizing these things for the benefit of those that are not following. What we're saying is safe register range. We want to add, for, before we add two numbers, we must put them in registers. And what we're saying is you want to make sure that you, you work with the temporal register range. Always a good idea. You could work with the saved registers, right? The S's, the, those with S's which are this here, this is fine, but these are mostly for, like if you're working with functions, right? Uh, so you can choose to use registers eight up to 15 or registers uh, 24 and 25. I've gotten used to just using eight to 15 myself. Um, and also the other thing is you can, you can choose to, you can choose to, um, and I think we, we might, might as well use this for, we might as well, this is the time we have to use what we are trying to do here. And it's not stop it. It's not program with a, two M's and an E, no. It's program with no E. This is how you spell it. Don't do that again, you know yourself. Now, um, let's say we, we're trying program to add two integers, five and seven, right? We're saying the first thing we need to do is we need to load, we need to load these things, we need to load them into registers. We want to add these two numbers and print the result. <clears throat> first thing we need to do is load, load first integer into register, load second integer into register, right? Perform operation, right? And then that's it. This, these are the steps we'd have to do for us to add five and seven, right? Um, and we said uh, we can take advantage of, um, even though we, we kind of introduced the uh, load immediate instruction, but we can take advantage of the add i, i formatted instruction. Why? Because it turns out that the add i instruction takes in a register as an operand and an immediate value. So we can take advantage of that, that fact and add or load the number five into a register. You are not restricted to using eight all the time. If you wish, you can use register 12, start with 12, nobody cares, right? But I prefer to start with the lowest register, it's much easier that way. So load the first register, the first integer into a register. We use the add i instruction we said I'm going to load it into register number eight, <clears throat> excuse me, and we are taking advantage of the add i instruction because we know that we can use the special purpose register 
zero, which is always zero, to add it to the immediate value, because we know that the next operand here is going to be the immediate value five, right? At this point, I know that the operation I'm performing here is just five plus zero. Five plus zero is going to be the number one to load, which is essentially what I'm doing, right? So five plus zero, I've loaded the number five into register number eight, um, so I've performed that operation. And then next thing I do is I say add I again, I take advantage of the add I instruction, and I say I'm gonna load this in register number nine, right, same format, uh, uh, register zero, and then the value seven. And then finally I perform the operation, the add operation, because I'm trying to add two integers, five and seven, I'll just add the, uh, two, uh, the, the two values in the registers, my two values are now in eight and nine, five is in eight, seven is in nine, and I'm going to add them, but I have to make a decision of where I'm going to put the result, right? And the result, I'm just going to say I'm going to put them in, in 10 because I know that the temporary register range is from eight to 15, right? So I'll add, I'll add the value in eight and nine. It doesn't matter, you can start the value in nine and eight. It's still going to be the same, right? I guess the, the thing here that it would be a bit, it would be important for you to make sure that these are not swapped if it was a subtraction operation. But if it's an addition operation, it doesn't matter. One plus two is the same as two plus one. One minus two is not the same as two minus one, right? So I will save this, and I decided to do this because we want to get used to this idea of, of writing code like this. I will save this, I've written my instructions, I will save them into a file that I will call uh, add example. Or one. Now you want to give it, a, I guess, a, a, an easy to remember name, not add example one, right? I'm just saying for this example, it's add example number one because it's an add, you get the point. And then more importantly, I give it an extension like that, that we've agreed on as convention, right? ASM or A or S, right? You're better off with ASM. I do encourage you to use ASM. And then I'll save this, right? So I've, I've written my my small little uh, piece of assembler, assembly uh, language program here, um, which just adds two, two integers, five and seven. And then what I will do is I will now have to, I need to have an assembler, right? And the, the only assembler I have access to is through Qt Spim here. Uh, and by the way, the windows here, I'll get rid of the floating point registers, a bit confusing here. Can anybody, yeah, everybody can see this, hopefully? The people at the back, yes. When you're sleeping, don't. <laughs> Dozing, so you. Now, so I will go to file, initialize and load file, nothing wrong in sleeping, and then I will select the program that I just created, right? And by the way, do this right now. Uh, I think these are working. You want to try out these things as I'm showing you these things, I think these are working. Right? Go to where we normally go. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Go here. You can copy the code there. If you want, you can write it from scratch. We are, we are pair programming here, so you can, as you, are, you can copy this from here if you want to. Um, just paste it. And you go there by <coughs> You access that thing that I'm talking about by going here, right? You'll, you'll be able to copy the code from there. So I've loaded it here, and you notice that when I load it, right, so a bit of interesting things are happening here. When I load this and I look at the user text here, you notice that the stuff that's loaded here excludes the comments. What I'm loading is instructions from line number four up to line number four, seven, and 10. Do you know why? Line number four, and I, I need to reload this because I added extra extra piece of code, I think. I need to load and initialize this. So five, eight, and 11. The only things that I've loaded there is five, eight, and 11. Why? Comment, comment, blank, comment, blank, blank, blank. I said this. I said comments are ignored by the assembler. Blanks are ignored by the assembler, which is why the things that are loaded in here is just the important instructions that are gonna be translated to the machine equivalent once we assemble this program. Right, so 
We've loaded this, and, and I also want to draw your attention to the registers that we are manipulating because e effectively the state of the CPU is going to be changed by, I mean, when the state of the CPU changes, it's just the values of the registers that we're manipulating are the ones that are, are going to change, right? So we expect the value in register number eight or register T naught to change, register number nine or T1 to change, register number 10 or T3 to change. T0, T1, T2, sorry, not T3, right? These are the values, T, T, yeah, 8. I've recorded this, go to YouTube, go to my channel, subscribe, like, please, now, but <laughs> I also dump the, the things on, that's what they say, right? Please like and subscribe and whatnot. I'm, I'm talking about, I'm deliberately saying, I want you to remember that 8, can also be referred to by saying dollar sign T0. Nine can be referred to by dollar sign T1, register eight, register nine, register 10, T2. If I wanted, that program could just as well have been written by saying add I dollar sign T0 or T0, comma dollar, dollar sign, not the zero, but dollar sign Z-E-R-O. This is one and the same thing. Do you understand this? So I've loaded this program, the most important thing, and you notice that these registers, right, eight, nine, and 10, initially, the initial state of the machine, this simulator, I've just initialized everything, everything is zero, right? Except for the special purpose registers like A1 and the, pro, the status register. But once I execute this thing, right, and, and we mentioned this, if you do F10, I guess you can do it stepwise. Please observe what's happening if I, stepwise is F10, I think. Does anybody know? I want to step through the, okay, F10. So I want to step through the, the code so that you see the state of the registers changing. I will press F10. Ooh, sorry. What the? Whoa, what did I do? I hope I didn't do anything wrong. Okay. Uh, F10 is supposed to be function 10 here, not just F10. So I'll press F10. I've, I've, so I'm stepping through this. Once I step through it, you notice that the first instruction I've executed, right? I just didn't press the play button, I'm stepping through. You step through the, when you step through the code, <clears throat> right? When you step through the codes, it's a single step, you're executing the, the chunk of code you've written one at a time. And we're doing this so that we understand how the state is changing on the CPU, right? Uh, so first line has been executed, the state of register eight changes, the value is five now. Right, uh, I will step through again, the value of uh, register nine changes. And then I will finally execute this, um, and then the value of register 10 changes. It's finally C. Seven plus five is C. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. No. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah, seven plus five is C, right? I, and mom and dad will think you are crazy when you tell them, they told us, there's this crazy lecture told us five plus seven is C. C. There's a question. <laughs> 